Hello and welcome back. Today we will be talking about why laissez-faire is so much better than interventionism and it's not close. This is part of our Victoria 3 tutorial series. Again, just to uh, say it again because I like saying it, laissez-faire is better than interventionism and it's not close. Uh, for this video we will be doing kind of three things. First we will be discussing kind of the background ideas necessary to unpack this conversation. Then we will be talking about kind of brief overview why laissez-faire is better than interventionism. And finally we will be taking a deep dive looking at some uh, examples with math uh, and really unpacking uh, in greater detail why it's better because it's one thing to kind of just explain the surface uh, kind of level thing and this is another to completely unpack it with some math. So starting off, uh, the economic system laws all affect investment pool. The way investment pool works is it gets used uh, in order to pay for construction good costs and it gets used at a rate that is dependent on the laws. Um, a certain percentage of every building, kind of zooming in over here, that you own, when it is making money, when there's a positive weekly balance, a certain percentage will be contributed to reinvestment. This uh, percentage is based on the pop type, in this case capitalists, which contribute 20%, which is the highest contribution uh, to the uh, investment pool. So generally, this is why you want to be capitalist oriented throughout your games. Aristocrats contribute 10% and farmers and shopkeepers contribute 5%. This is up until the late game, but that's too much to unpack right now and so this will be paying again just for the construction goods it doesn't pay for the government wages uh, that are employing the construction center so it doesn't cover this uh, for the investment pool with all these different laws uh, they will kind of affect uh, the contribution they will uh, modify it and it is important to note this does not affect the amount of money that is getting taken away from the pops so in traditionalism when we get minus 50 percent capitalist investment pool contribution efficiency what is happening here is capitalists are still paying 20 percent but half of that is just skimmed off and it is annihilated into nothing that's how this works secondarily what these laws do is they commit certain amounts to the private construction uh, allocation uh, everything that can be contributed to the allocation the private construction queue can pick up but it is important to note uh, that while 25 percent is contributed here into the private allocation under traditionalism for example, uh, if the private allocation, uh, this contribution uh, or this allocation for the private one, uh, this allows money to be paid from the investment pool. And so uh, the amount the investment pool could contribute is up to this 25% and then the private queue will take over this. This is the way it works and it goes into the private construction queue. If your investment pool cannot afford this 25%, then whatever is a uh, surplus of that or whatever's left over just goes back to the government construction queue and vice versa. So for example, if you have a huge investment pool and you just stop constructing with your active government construction, uh, then it will overflow into the private construction if your investment pool can still afford to build there. Okay, so what is all this? what is all this business and let's like talk a detail about interventionism so interventionalism interventionism is kind of like your basic bitch type of law uh it is the most neutral looking law it gives you 50 percent private uh construction allocation and it does not modify any of these traditionalism for example modifies negatively aristocrats uh capitalists and shopkeepers and laissez-faire which we are talking about positively modifies capitalists and shopkeepers uh so this is kind of the the first thing to note is that it is going to be creating money out of nothing because capitalists contribute 25 percent but you have to remember this modifier uh doesn't increase the amount of money that's taken away from capitalists it just increases the amount that hits your pool and so what it will do is it will increase this amount by 25 percent which means money is being created out of nothing. It doesn't pull 25% uh, total from your capitalists. It's still pulling 20%, but 25% hits the pool. Okay, so that's thing one, is that capitalists are going to be more like that. Shopkeepers too, but you come off of shopkeepers relatively early. It does have a disadvantage, and it doesn't allow the do downsizing of non-government buildings, which interventionism does. Um, this is perhaps the, one of the few reasons why if you're over 2 billion GDP, you're not as concerned about the investment pool um, in the late game because eventually it does suffer a significant malice just quickly kind of covering over that idea uh your investment pool the larger your gdp the bigger the malice uh and eventually your investment pool becomes not as useful but we are in uh interventionism and laissez-faire are both laws that you want to use when uh you are still having when the investment pool is still good uh once the investment pool is bad you want to switch to cooperative ownership but anyways 
backing it up, um, you can't downsize non-governmental buildings. This is perhaps the biggest uh, disadvantage because eventually, sometimes in the late game, you do like to reorganize your agriculture because, uh, for example, here we have a 1% throughput from economies of scale. In theory, we only have like 20, what is this, 30 levels total of agriculture. We would prefer to build one thing up to level 30 so that it could have a 30% economies of scale bonus. Uh, of course, we have this negative uh, modifier here that is a temporary modifier, but otherwise, we would have increased 30% output. Okay, so uh, that is the biggest disadvantage of laissez-faire uh, relative to interventionism. You can't delete buildings, but generally speaking, you don't want to delete buildings. You want to just keep your buildings because your buildings are generally productive and doing useful thing. Um, laissez-faire also gives you minus loan interest rate. And it is important to note for this line, minus loan interest rate, this is additive with other modifiers, uh, specifically the modifiers of your country size. And I believe it is also additive uh, with the petite bourgeoisie uh, for the treasury bonds with the minus loan interest rate. Um, and it is not multiplicative. So if we come into the modifiers thing and we uh, scroll down and eventually find it uh, once upon a time, once upon a midnight weary, while I suffered, suffered weak and weary and tried to find the uh, unfindable thing. Oh my God, rip the dream. Uh, I swear it's here. I swear it's in here. I think it's pretty close to the top. Okay, here we have loan interest rate, uh, minus 75%, 50% from great power, 25% from laissez-faire. So if you are a great power, it's not just minus 25%, because if you already have the 50% cutoff uh, from being a great power, right? What it represents, you're only paying 50%. What a 25% decrease represents to you when it is stacking additively here is actually a 50% decrease in what you're actually paying. So for example, we are paying currently, uh, we are paying 15K in interest, 15.1K, and we would be paying 30K in interest if we were not on laissez-faire. And so this is very important to note. Uh, deficit spending is extraordinarily strong and it's way, way, way better uh, when you're on laissez-faire because the interest rate particularly uh, gets paid out to your higher rung pops. It gets paid out to the ownership pops. Um, the owners of buildings who have cash reserves are the ones who get paid out. Uh, in general, you can think of it like a tax, and you would prefer to tax the higher rung pops uh, because if we take a look at income relative to standard of living, there's diminishing marginal returns on how much income you make in terms of how high you can get the standard of living. And because of that, you would prefer to tax the upper strata because it has less of a negative effect on your standard of living, which is a driver of you know a bunch of positive things in your country. Um, this is kind of a bit to unpack, but coming back to, um, you know, laissez-faire and uh, interventionism here, you do have this minus loan interest rate. So you're paying out less to the capitalists um, in terms of when you are running a deficit. And it's a whole lot less. It's half if you are a GP. And finally, we have this negative uh, 75 or 75 private construction allocation. Okay which is commonly seen as the biggest negative modifier. Remember, this is just kind of basic. We don't really need to take a close look here. And this is the negative 75 is what's seen as everyone's like, oh no, I don't like having control of my queue. This is terrible. Uh, what do I do? Well, here's the thing. When you have, so if you have laissez-faire paying for 75% and you were making enough money, uh, that you would like to pay for more construction yourself, you would like to pay for the construction goods, you can just add more construction. And this is what laissez-faire does. It might proportionally decrease the amount of, uh, you know, uh, construction you're in control of, but it increases the amount of construction you're getting for the exact same cost you're paying as a player because it's creating money out of nothing with the 25% modifier. Um, and so this is thing one is like, you can just add more construction until you're actually uh, making it so that you're controlling 50%. But on top of that, I would actually rather have this be 95%. This is actually not a bad modifier. And it's not a bad modifier because you can always add more construction. In fact, I'd rather have it be 100% with the caveat that I would like to be able to add construction centers. Um, <laughs> if it was 100% and it was just constantly building and it never let you add more construction, that would be a bit of a problem. And the reason for this is uh, the <laughs> it is often the case in some games that your investment pool just accumulates more and more and more and more. And this money, when it is sitting in the investment pool, 
does nothing. It is inefficient. It is just worthless. Sitting in the investment pool, it's not working for you. You're working for it. You would rather this get cranked into buildings. And what this does, what this 75% does, is it unlocks your ability to utilize a larger chunk of your investment pool. This is a positive modifier. And everyone's just like, oh, I want more control. And it's like, it's a positive modifier here with the private construction allocation uh, because it means you can utilize more of your construction investment pool. If we can only utilize 10% of this, if, if uh, let's say hypothetically, we had 10% contribution, private allocation. That means that the investment pool could only cover 10% of the construction goods, and then it would only build 10% in the private queue. It, it would only, in the private construction thing, it would only use 10% of our construction. Taking a look here, uh, in our budget thing, we are currently paying 26, uh, point two, uh, 262k for construction goods. If it was 10% allocation, it would only be able to contribute 26.2. If that were the case, uh, we would be running an even bigger deficit than we are by like another 40k because currently we're contributing 90. The, what it does is it unlocks your ability to build more. I can't emphasize this enough. This is not a negative modifier. This is not bad. And I, this is this is what everyone comes to me with. They're like, oh, I just like to control more of your queue. This isn't bad. Um, it's the trade-off of more construction is just so, so, so positive, um, you know, in favor of this. And also, you know, you want the money in your investment pool to be constantly drained and constantly moving towards zero. Okay, okay. Okay, we're going to take a look at the examples here. And we are going to talk about them. So, scenario one, investment pool, by the way, let's actually jump in here and uh, talk in the scene here. First, the some of the numbers we are using here, uh, just to talk about it. Here we have construction center here. Uh, this construction center is producing 10 construction. It's got a weekly balance of 10K and wages are about 1K. Uh, this is pretty perfect because it makes all the math really easy and is kind of informing our hypothetical here. Uh, I would like to emphasize that, that this is an environment that is very, very uh, good for interventionism. Um, when you are on iron frame buildings, it is better for interventionism than when you go steel frame and arc welded buildings because you're paying a higher percentage um, in wages. Uh, this 10% in wages goes down and down as you progress towards steel frame and arc frame. This is important to note because this is one of the breakpoints points um, that uh, the extra amount you are paying to wages because you have to pay for the wages of the stuff that's in the private allocation this is actually what decreases your pro your proportional control of the queue because if you have if you didn't have to pay for any of the wages um, in your in the in the private allocation you could just add more construction until you are just paying for the exact same construction and you would never lose any proportional construction relative to what you're building Okay, so let's jump into the example um, as we uh, should. So coming in here, uh, scenario one, uh, and this is probably the best scenario where uh, interventionism looks the best and it still doesn't look good. Investment pool is at an equilibrium of 50% of construction cost under interventionism. So this means that um, the investment pool is covering half of the construction goods and the the state is covering the other half. So we have 100 government construction and 100 private construction under interventionism. The government cost is 110k, 90k of that is going to construction and 20k is to wages. It covers the wages for the uh, for the uh, private one. Uh, the IPT covers 90k. We have a total of 200 construction, 50% private, 50% government, 100% private, or 100 government, private construction, 100 government. You're catching what I'm saying. If we swap to laissez-faire, the investment pool increases to 109k, assuming that you have happy industrialists. So jumping briefly back into here, um, your industrialist if you have happy industrialists that are powerful you will be getting job creators which gives 20 percent investment pool contribution efficiency so this means the 20 percent bonus that you're getting from laissez-faire uh doesn't really represent or, or sorry the 25 percent bonus doesn't really represent 25 percent bonus it represents closer to a 20 percent bonus uh, because when you stack it additively it's 145 percent bonus and so it is not increasing you know what it is relative to interventionism because under interventionism you will still have access to the powerful uh happy industrialists and so this is why this context is kind of important here to add uh, but back into the browser uh 
So we move up to 109K, assuming happy industrialist, and let's assume we keep government cost uh, constant and just add construction instead. This is the primary argument here. When we switch to laissez-faire, we get to add construction. If you didn't switch, you could instead save money and spend it on other things, but we're just going to add construction instead. So what's going to happen is the government cost is going to be 110K and then the investment pool will cover 109K. So notice we're staying, paying the same much, same amount, and this is also coming in. So now we're going to do this plus this. Remember construction is about 1K in our example. It's not always 1K, but this is the example that is most generous to interventionism because it has a high percentage cost on wages. Um, we have total 219 total construction. 56% of it is private, 44% is government. And I don't know what you're thinking. What are you saying? G generally, as you said, we would lose more construction. We wouldn't lose construction. We would just add construction. That looks like I have less control. 121% of that, oh, 21 of that construction is private. 98% is government. That means we have increased construction by 9.5%, but there's only 2% decrease in nominal control. We've gone from controlling 100 construction to controlling 98 construction. This this 2% less control is not worth more than a 9.5% 9 inc 9 increase in total construction. And this is in a situation in particular that favors interventionism and make in, makes interventionism look better. Um, let's take a look at one where it looks even worse. And again, this is no debt. The, the interest rate is a huge part of why laissez-faire is good. This is under no debt. Okay, scenario two. The second example. Uh, above, but there's an additional accumulation, no debt to GDP. So we have 100 government construction, 100 private under interventionism. But what is occurring, 90K is accumulating to the investment pool. So we have an investment pool that's overflowing into uh, the investment pool. We are accumulating, and this is big bad. This is why I said I would like to have a 100% contribution because we could drain the investment pool. So this investment pool is getting bigger and bigger and bigger at a rate of 90K in this example that we are taking a look at here. If we go and we are doing that, uh, we have 200 total construction under interventionism uh, with a government cost of 110K. Same as before. When we swap to laissez-faire, the investment pool contribution increases to 218K from uh, 180K. It's important to note that it won't increase quite this much uh, because you will have some buildings that are not capitalist owned, uh, but in the Ottomans, which we are kind of like looking at now, this only represents like 10% of the investment pool contribution um, under laissez-faire. So, okay. Moving on, um, let's assume we keep the government wages constant and just add construction instead. Government costs go up to, or say at 110K, but now 33K are in wages instead of 20K. There's 77K to construction and investment pool covers a whopping 218K up from 90K, right? Because we are fully transferring it. What you get is 328 total construction, 74% private. Oh no, so much is controlled by the private queue. This is what people are afraid of, uh, or this is the scenario um, I think that pe sounds bad to people. Uh, under this scenario, 26% um, government cost, uh, 240 private, and 86 government. But you can't really compare this 86 to this 242. You should instead be comparing it to the 100 up here because the cost from the government perspective is exactly the same here, right? You would, what this 75% is doing is it's unlocking this money. It's unlocking this overflow, this 90K overflow and allowing you to properly utilize it instead of it just accumulating, which was a bad thing. And what you get is a 64% increase in total construction with only 14% decrease in the amount of construction you are controlling as the player. This is huge because what it means is that you are building way, way more. Sure, you don't have a lot of control, but the, the automatic queue will build railroads. It'll build like, it'll build stuff you care about. And you can't possibly, in my mind, um, argue that this 14% is worth more than 64% additional construction. This is a rare case. What happens most of the time and what is happening in this game is the uh, investment pool transfer is not covering anywhere near 75%, right? This is, we're getting around 89 into 262. This is roughly a third. And so 
under interventionism, we're not even uh, breaching the 50% control under interventionism, right? Our private queue uh, is not a spooky 75% queue. So let's look at another example uh, where we uh, have a, someone who's at 25%. IPT is at equilibrium at 25% under construction and under interventionism. No debt to G, uh, no debt and you're a great power. Okay. Uh, 150 government construction, 50 private. Government costs are 155k in this example. That way you have control of 75% uh, of the queue. And IPT covers 45. This is 200 construction, 25% is private, 75% is government. Okay. Um, we swap to laissez-faire. IPT increases to 54k, up from 45k, uh, assuming happy industrialists, etc. Let's assume we keep government costs constant and just add construction instead. Government costs are still 155k and IPT covers more. What we get is a total of 209 construction, that's this plus this, right? The, one, the 155 plus 54, uh, considering construction to cost 1k a piece, and we get 209 total construction, 29, uh, or sorry, this should not be 20, yeah, this should be 29% private. Okay, it's up from 25%, 71% uh, government, 60 private, and 149 government. So we've only lost one government construction to this, and we've gotten a 4.5 increase, a total increase in construction, with only 0.7 decrease in our nominal control. And so, which is the, the normal scenario, you are getting like, what is this math? Math is hard. This is nearly a 7x. The amount you are losing control of, you're getting nearly 7x for free uh, into the uh, this contribution, which it looks a little bit better than this, right? It's a one third of this roughly, and this is close to double this. Okay, so these are examples, but these are examples that don't include interest. Now, we pulled the numbers specifically for what's going on in the Ottoman game here, okay? Um, there's 290 in the Ottoman game here. Just jumping into the game, there's 293 construction. Can we highlight it? Um, yeah, so there's 293 construction, and uh, under the math, let's just jump back into the spreadsheet. With the math, or not spreadsheet, 193% of or 193 of this government construction and 100 is private construction. This is the 89k paying for it. The government construction cost is 198k, um, which is a uh, split between 173 paying for construction goods and 25k paying for wages. We looked at the actual wages. We're not. This is much less approximated and much more real. These are roughly approximated. Um, IBT covers 89k, which gives you a 0.9k uh, cost uh, per construction. Uh, okay, and then here's just the split. Uh, it is 34% private and 66% government. There's no boogeyman. We're on laissez-faire right here. This is laissez-faire GP, and we're running 15k interest. We ran rounded that down. Swapping to interventionalism, IPT decreases to 75k using the same math as above, but we uh, kept 9k away from that math uh, because it was being contributed from subsistence farms and agriculture. A lot of subsistence farms here in the Ottoman Empire at this juncture. Um, this ratio is going to change wildly from run to run, and so you can't just like math it in a general. Okay. Let's assume that we keep government costs constant and instead delete construction, my least favorite thing to do, we have to delete construction in order to keep this government cost at 198k, but we're swapping to interventionism. Government cost is uh, 183 plus 15k. Well, what do you mean by that? We have to pay 15k in additional interest because our interest rate has gone from 75% discount to 50% discount, which represents for us a doubling of the interest. Um, we will be paying 161 for construction goods and now 22K in wages. So we're paying less for wages. Um, 75K uh, is from the uh, IPT. Uh, we didn't add that over there. Uh, but what we have is 252 total construction. So we've lost a lot of construction. We've lost like 40 construction. 32% of it is private, so we've noticed a slight difference. Hey, a little bit less of that is private. We're now controlling another 2% of the queue. 68% uh, is government. We have 81 private construction and 171 government construction. 
Wait, scratch the phone. We have 171 government construction? That's less than we had before here because we're paying interest and the extra interest is part of our government expense here. So we can actually, it's actually decreasing our nominal control. In this example where we weren't paying a uh, less interest rate as a result of laissez-faire, swapping to laissez-faire, we got an increase or we got a decrease in marginal control going over to laissez-faire. Here we actually get an increase in marginal control going over to laissez-faire when we are running interest. What the end result is, is a 14% decrease in our total construction moving from, uh, let's see, where is it here? 100, uh, 293 uh, to 252. And we get an 11.4 decrease in nominal control. The amount of construction we have is decreased by 11.4. And this is with the exact same government cost. Now you have to factor in that there's gonna be less consumption by the pops that you're effectively taxing by not paying them an interest rate. But the pops that you are taxing are the the upper rung pops they're the pops you want to be taxing anyways and so oops and so just coming back in the pops that are being taxed are the upper rung pops they're the ownership class only that are effectively being taxed by not being paid an interest rate and while paying interest isn't money into oblivion and it does stimulate the economy you would rather pay less of it um, but being able to deficit spend is incredibly powerful all of this has gone to construction. This means we built buildings with it and these buildings are accumulating money. They're contributing to the investment pool. Generally speaking, deficit spending is quite strong and it's especially strong when you have laissez-faire. It would be even stronger if we had a strong petite bourgeoisie, but just to kind of, you know, briefly summarize here, this uh, private construction allocation is actually, you'll almost never hit the 75% anyways, once you're up and running. Uh, you can make an argument that interventionism is good, um, you know, before you have 40 construction, this type of thing, when you're trying to ramp stuff up and you in particular, you're like, I need to build a port here. I need to add construction centers and you can't add them fast enough, this sort of thing. Interventionism is better, but I don't even think it's worth the extra time it takes to pass interventionism right? Uh, having to do two law passes instead of one, I think you just go straight for laissez-faire if, uh, you know, if that's the choice. Um, the 75% construction allocation is actually a positive modifier. And so ding, 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 negative on there. You can subsidize all buildings. Generally speaking, you don't like subsidizing buildings because when you subsidize something and then someone imports it or you subsidize something that you're exporting to other people, which is often part of the strategy and it's a lot to unpack, you're effectively subsidizing um, either a decrease in the cost of their industrial goods or you're subsidizing an increase in their standard of living. And so subsidies are generally bad. You can make an argument for some multiplayer strategies and I, I still think that it doesn't pan out, but you can make... There's somewhat of an argument. Um, you get minus loan interest rate, and it's important to note, this is not a minus 25% in terms of what you're paying, but if you're a GP, it's a minus 50% in terms of what you're paying. Now, to be fair, if you're an unrecognized minor power, you just don't want to run a deficit at all, uh, because I think they get like plus 50% loans, so you, they will be paying, with the minus 50, uh, 25, that's stacking additively, they'll be paying 125% of the interest, um, you know, not uh, half the interest, or sorry, not just 25% of the interest, they'll be paying like 5x or something can subsidize infrastructure and trade centers great and the increased capital investments pool contribution efficiency even if this wasn't in here and this is the probably the most valuable thing even if this wasn't in here i think laissez-faire would be better but what this does is it creates money out of nothing um currently we are getting you know uh about 90k and about 20% of this, a little bit less than 20% of this, because we have to less than 9K. So if we less than 9K, it's about 80K, 20% of 8K. What is that? Uh, uh, 16K, roughly 16K of income here is coming for free, created out of nothing from this capitalist investment pool contribution efficiency. This is such a powerful modifier. And because of this, laissez-faire is the premium for if you are caring about investment pool. Now, later on, you don't care about investment pool and co cooperative ownership becomes better. Fine. Fair enough, um, this is fine. But if you are going to be comparing just these two, laissez-faire is very clearly and very much so better than interventionism. And I don't, I mean, if you wanna put an argument in the comments, feel free to do so. But uh, you will have a hard time convincing me um, 
please support it with uh, math if you can, uh, if you think it is just, I'm not understanding the math here. But as far as I can see, uh, you know, it just increases the amount of construction you can get uh, and doesn't really decrease the amount you are controlling because, eh, just jumping back into the example, it does, okay, it decreases nominal decrease in control. Uh, it's often gonna look like scenario three, where you are, you have an amount, an equilibrium, where you, the private queue is controlling less than, you know, 50% by a significant margin. This 7% decrease in control is, uh, I'm, I make this trade every day. This 0.7 in decrease in control for 4.5% increase in total construction. Even if it were equal, I would pay it. Like even if it was a 4.5 decrease in nominal control for 4.5 free construction, I'd still pay it. Construction is so good. Uh, you know, the, the AI is like bad at allocating it, but they're not that bad. And so like, just coming in and just like re-emphasizing this is almost nothing <laughs> laissez-faire is just very very much so better uh and i hope you enjoyed this video feel free to like comment subscribe and other than that have a good day